welcome to Titan Craft, Tango Tech's amazing Patreon server, Season 9. Uh, we're here on a new world with a ton of amazing people. Let me give you a recap of the first few days of this season. I took a little look at the absolutely beautiful spawn we have this season. This is a vanilla paper spigot server with everything being built in survival except the spawn, which is built by the mods and placed into the world before the season begins. And we leave spawn and butt off to who knows where. Uh, the goal here is to survive, get some blocks, find the base area, and find an area to set up base for the nether hub crew. I designed the nether hub this season and will be leading a team of amazing people to get it built on the server. An unfortunate stroke of bad luck, we almost immediately get hit with mining fatigue as we boat over an ocean monument just outside of spawn. This is actually fantastic because punching trees is my favorite thing to do, and this way I never have to stop. With so many people online, the server gets quite laggy, so even without mining fatigue, breaking blocks can take a while and several tries. I skip this issue entirely by punching a tree for minutes without end and- Oh, okay, well, uh, he just broke that, so, well, I'll break then? Eventually I become freed from this nightmare and can actually gather materials and make myself some tools. Though at this point I'm losing haunches and have no food, and it's almost nighttime. Dried kelp is just not doing it. Luckily someone's stolen a mushroom from the shopping district and offers bowls of free soup to me. I grab half an inventory of shroom juice and that honestly keeps me going for quite a while. I ventured off on my own to find an open ocean to use for my base. On the way, I grab some iron. I came across a pillager outpost, which I would eventually come back to claim for myself to eventually get raid captains whenever I make a raid farm. And fairly quickly I found a perfect guardian monument surrounded by ocean to center my base on. So I claimed it and then went digging for blocks so that I could eventually build pillars around my claim to make sure it would be seen by anybody who came by. On Titancraft there's no official claiming system, players are expected to fully mark out their claimed areas with something like visible pillars and to stay out of render distance from other players claimed areas. So that's what I did made many pillars in the ocean surrounding my new monument, and marked them with my name. I claimed a pretty large area, a square a few hundred blocks on each side. My base this season will be built entirely on the water. Uh, you'll see that unfold eventually. Once my base was fully marked out, I had a few responsibilities to attend to. First, marking off the eventual center of the nether hub in the nether. Then, catching up with another hub crew, they settled in this village and began setting up a base camp. Uh, side note, I wish I'd gotten on camera, but the very first wither skeleton I killed gave me a wither skeleton skull, which was pretty awesome. After making my first diamond pickaxe, my next responsibility, party with another crew. Collectively, everyone on the server helped contribute to getting enough obsidian in the spawn, shopping district, and entertainment district portals. For now, we set up the spawn portal and light it. And with some mod magic, the portal building gets a bit bigger. After several attempts, we finally get the spawn portal set up in the right spot on the nether side, and the nether crew gets to work digging what will eventually be our main nether tunnels. Meanwhile, I get to work setting up all of the portals to the shopping and entertainment districts. The giant floating island that has spawn on top of it has two mushroom islands on either side of it. One is the shopping district and one is the entertainment district. Each district, in addition to the main spawn portal, will have three portals inside of the nether hub. A north, south, and central portal. Seven portals total inside of the nether hub. This is my fourth season on Titancraft, and it's a server that I consider to be my Minecraft home. One of the many traditions on Titancraft is keeping the end off limits for the first week of every season. Strongholds, however, are not off limits, and neither are the end portals. It is just heavily advised to not jump into one until the end has actually opened, because you will die. So naturally, we all make our way into a nearby stronghold to see what the mods have cooked up to kill players who wander into end portals this season. Truth be told, I was made a staff member at the end of last season, so I already knew a bit about what awaited us, but it was great fun nonetheless. I went in and kept pressing buttons many, many times over and over just to see what would happen, to see in what new ways I could be killed.
After these shenanigans, my friend Limbrugger and I set off back to my base area that I'd claimed. We set up a platform, light another portal, head back to spawn to grab a mushroom for easy, unlimited food, and then I dive right into building a completely unplanned starter base. And here we are. We're on our way with this build. It has been a little over uh, 40 hours since the server opened. I went to sleep for a little while uh, after the time last that you just saw. I'm kind of liking how it's turning out. Uh, I did not plan this at all <laughs> in creative ahead of time, which is not usually how I work. I usually don't start placing blocks without any plan whatsoever. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. Uh, these need to be textured quite a bit. I'm gonna add a few, like, details. I'm not gonna add too many details, uh, because this is completely temporary. I'm pretty positive that this is just gonna be torn down at some point. But, as far as starter bases go, it's a pretty good one. Uh, it'll be- I- once it's all finished and everything is, uh, taken care of on the inside and put together, I think it'll be a really, a really good starter base and uh once i have a lot of the infrastructure in place for my main base uh, i can take it down when and if i need to it's uh basically on the edge of my claim here and uh it's not super important whether it stays or goes uh, but at some point before the season is over and hopefully my whole base is built it'll probably be gone to give you kind of an idea of what i'm going to be doing here uh the main center part of the base is going to be on top of this guardian monument here and there's going to be several i think six different pieces of the base scattered throughout uh, the ocean here a couple over here one right here and then a couple coming off the back and they're all going to be connected i won't go too much further into detail but that's the basic idea here is we're going to be completely in the ocean building some pretty big builds all connected to each other and i'm pretty sure uh this is where my portal is going to go back here where the starter base is uh the main portal i'll probably have other portals scattered throughout uh to be able to get to things easier but uh, the main portal i want you to be able to come out of the main portal and see the big the main base in front of you and kind of fly towards it uh, so anyone visiting will be able to see it super clearly as they come out of the portal i built up a ton of villagers i ended up actually stopping them from making any more uh, just because there's an entity cap on the server and I don't want to accidentally pass it. I actually have no idea how many are in there. We will find that out. I have spaces in here for 37 villagers. And uh, we're going to fill that up with a, a few different kinds of villagers. Some librarians for basic books. Uh, the most important ones. Not all of them. Just mending and breaking. Stuff like that. Uh, we're going to do some farmers for golden carrots. We're going to do some more fletchers probably. Uh, for stick trades to get emeralds here. I'm going to get some... Uh, toolsmiths and yeah i'm not entirely sure what else we're gonna get some uh, clerics because i want to get some xp bottles and the main thing that this season is going to be for me is pretty much entirely based around redstone and selling redstone in a redstone shop in the shopping district which speaking of which has uh literally just opened a few hours ago uh i am not going to try and take a spot there yet because I don't have any idea what I'm actually building uh, as far as the shop goes and I have nothing to put in it yet but uh, once I get some clerics I can start trading for some redstone and uh, start selling that at least and then start building up what I have available to me as far as redstone components to sell that's my main thing I'm going to be doing this season is a sort of redstone factory 
supplying my redstone shop that I want to do. So I'm kind of uh, slightly sharing this base with one of my uh, friends on here, Limbrogger. Uh, he has plans for the season that don't necessarily involve having a base. Uh, I don't want to spoil them or anything, but uh, he so he's staying here for a little while. He set up this bamboo. I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to move this. I think I'm going to have kind of an idea of what I want to do with uh, some farming areas coming off of here. I also want to build an iron farm coming off of here very soon. Uh, but he, while well, I was asleep, went ahead and grabbed a couple of villagers and set these up. So once we get some emeralds, we can get some diamond gear because I'm not doing so hot. Uh, and we can trade for some emeralds with sticks and I can use that to get plenty of emeralds to trade for the things we need. Uh, I'm going to probably make like a little micro farm that uses bone meal to make lots and lots of carrots to trade to farmers to get lots of emeralds. Uh, we're going to do uh, zombie curing. I've got a few golden apples and that's what this is here for. The sticky pistons here, this is where the villagers each are going to be eventually. And the sticky pistons will bring them down and uh, there's going to be a uh, zombie back there to hurt the villagers and convert them. Because this is my first video, it's possible that you've never seen any of my builds. So I wanted to take a quick minute during these first few episodes to show you some of the things that I've done. First, this is season six of Titancraft, my first season on the server. And this is my very first build on here, a build that I feel a ton of nostalgia for. This is a flower shop that I put a ton of time and effort into, and it actually ended up being fairly lucrative. I also had two other shops, a wood truck shop, which was a build inspired by this YouTuber. Vehicles are not my strong suit. And this beacon shop, which is the Beacon of Gondor, based on this still from Return of the King. This was the first server I ever played on, so I got pretty invested in selling stuff in the shopping district. My main build this season was a full castle and village area surrounding a fully custom hand-built lake. This entire terrain was custom terraformed and has hundreds of fully custom trees. The castle itself is fully interior decorated with royal rooms, servants quarters, a kitchen, a dining room, a library, an armory, stables, and so much more. It also contains a multi-item sorter built underneath of it that sends items to specific parts of the castle, flowers to groundskeeping, food to the kitchen, etc. Across the lake is a town with a shopping area, houses, a church, a graveyard, and many other builds. This was my first base on Titancraft, and I was really proud of how it turned out. I'm just going to yoink one of these totems of undying from this chest here, from the uh, lovely nether hub and tunnels storage area. Uh, it's been a few days. Uh, the server has been open for almost a week now. I've got full netherite armor. Uh, this was a gift from Limbrogger. <laughs> Uh, he just kind of gave it to me one day, all of a sudden he threw it into my inventory and I had cover me in debris. I uh, was not expecting it, but very much appreciated. It was just uh, diamond villager armor that I've I put mending on. I've put a couple more enchants on as well, but a lot of the enchants are still just the, the basic villager enchants. The tunnels are starting to come along here. People have already started laying down all this ice. All these slabs. Very excited for you guys to see a full design of this nether hub. Might show a little bit more off of the progress in the next episode. But for right now, I'm just gonna hop down my precarious one block wide tunnel out to the nether portal here and give you a look at how the base is going. Things have been going very well, in my opinion. Uh, this is the, I guess, as completed as it's gonna get starter base. I might keep adding some more things on to it as time goes on. For a build that I entirely just built on a whim in survival, literally no creative planning whatsoever, uh, I think it turned out pretty okay. I usually just build like small houses as my starter bases every season, but I've never uh, 
started in the ocean before, so I like this kind of floating house concept. I've got this platform up here that grows sugarcane and bamboo. I've had this little section right here hanging off the side uh, that contains a storage room and the nether portal now. Got rid of all the stuff that was underneath here. I covered up all the, the villager stuff as well that's underneath of uh, that back part of the building. I built this iron farm, which took forever. I was going to put a bit of me building it in, but it was just such a trial and error mess. It took me so long to build, and I tore down and rebuilt it like so many times to try and get something that I liked. Uh, it's okay. It's not bad. It's at least somewhat decorated. It's not just an uncovered iron farm with nothing around it, which uh, was my goal. Uh, it's kind of, and I like that it has some contrast against the rest of the build with the uh, deep slate. I've also made this pipe. There's some hoppers right there. The golems get killed down here. There's a hopper line right here, and it goes up this pipe here and into the building, and I'll show you where that ends up. But we can take just take a look around the, the whole building here. Pretty simple design that I just repeated around the entire thing. I'll show you a little bit of the interior which I am pretty pleased with. Hop on up the Soul Sand Elevator here. This is the first floor of villagers. These are the librarians and the one toolsmith I have. This guy has every single tool, so I don't need any more than one guy. We've got some pretty good trades here. These are all the, the books that I uh, care about having for myself. These were actually mostly rolled by Limbrugger the other day, uh, and I've transported them up here. Uh, he got Efficiency 5 on his first roll, his first librarian roll, which is crazy uh, and very lucky. And he proceeded to get uh, a lot of really good ones. These two aren't locked in with anything yet. I'm looking to get maybe looting three and protection four. I think those would be good to have looting three. I plan on having some farms, especially the, the guardian farm. It would be nice to have my own uh, looting three sword uh, all the time to use for that. And uh, this guy was lucky enough to have Feather Falling and Aqua Infinity. Zombified all these guys and, and cured them. You can see my... Oop. Don't want to let him out. Oop. That was close. <laughs> you can see my, uh, my zombie back there. This is not the original zombie. There's also another zombie in the, the other trading hall up here that I'll show you. Neither of them are the original zombie. Both of the zombies that I originally got escaped and killed me and put my netherite armor on. And I had to kill them. And... It was not a fun time. I died so many times trying to get zombies into this place. But all these guys are uh, zombified and healed now. I'll take you up here. Uh, not everybody up here is zombified and he uh, healed. I needed to get more blaze rods to give these guys brewing stands because I want to have a lot of clerics, like I mentioned, for uh, trading for redstone. I want to start selling redstone as soon as possible. Uh, my shop will be a, a mix of redstone and a guardian farm drops at some point. Uh, that is the main goal, and you'll see more of that as the uh, season progresses, what the plan is there. Uh, I need a lot of bricks and quartz, so I'm going to get some of that from these guys. I might replace these guys with more masons or more clerics, uh, depending on uh, how quickly I can get my raid farm going. So let's come back down here, and over here is the storage room and the nether portal. So a little exit out here to the bamboo and sugarcane. This is going to be the main storage room for a while. Uh, as soon as we get shulkers, this will hopefully be end up being enough space so I can just store stuff in, in shulkers within these chests because uh, I'm going to need a lot of stuff. This is probably going to end up being my main base for a few months as I build another hub, as I start to get the infrastructure built on my main base, which is going to take a while because it's a really big base spread out over a, a large area. And I want a lot of things to go a lot of different places. It's going to take me a while to get that going. Uh, I'm probably going to end up using this for a while. I don't know if I'm going to keep this building here, honestly. At the end, this building was never planned. I did not have any idea I was going to build this when the season first started. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, so I maybe will keep it. But it is kind of out of place, not necessarily in style. Uh, the factory style that I'm going for here is what I'm going to be going for over there, but it's much grander on the main base. This is a much smaller scale, so it might not fit in very well. Uh, so we'll see. I might end up getting rid of this. But uh, at least I'll be able to use it for a few months. Through these doors is kind of like a behind the scenes kind of area. This is the, the thing to control, dropping the villagers down so the zombie can zombify them. This is where the iron farm comes in, right here, and inputs into this chest. I've been composting the poppies because uh, I don't need them. But, and uh, I've been trading some of the iron with uh, villagers as well. But it's been really nice to have a steady flow of iron come in. I've been using that for things. Coming back through here, 
And then we'll go up again, and then coming up on top of the roof. Kind of like this, kind of like this view. We've got a melon and pumpkin farm right here, a very small one. Lovely little uh, smokestack here. Stairway up here. This has been uh, loading here for a little while, so I've got uh, a decent amount of pumpkins and, and melons here. Craft all of these up. And uh, I've been trading these for to villagers as well, because uh, they're now that they're cured, each of these is one emerald, is worth one emerald, so that's a bunch of stacks of emeralds right there, which is just awesome. In here you can see the, the iron farm working, there's the, the scared villagers, and I actually got a drowned up here. Uh, he stole the boat that I put him in originally, which uh, was great, uh, I mean I didn't have to name tag him. There's an iron golem spawning right there, and he goes down there and gets burned into lava. Uh, it took me forever to get a zombie for both of the levels in here, so I just went with the drowned in here because it ends up working out the same for, uh, for an iron farm. The next thing I want to do is possibly get a beacon going so I can go uh, mining and get some materials because I'm going to need a lot. I'm going to need some for a shop. I'm going to need some for the base. So uh, I have one wither skeleton skull already that I got from the very first wither skeleton that I killed. Uh, I've also got this random looting three sword that I got from a ruined nether portal in the overworld, which I figured I would use to try and go kill some wither skeletons. I don't have looting three on anything else yet, so this is the best shot I have at getting more. Nice. I would say this has been worthwhile. I've only got one shot left. Let's see if I can kill one more with it. Nope. Oh well. One is plenty. And I got 12 blaze rods also, which is something I also needed. I'll have to come back and try to get a third head when I get a looting three villager and can get that on my diamond sword here. The last thing that I want to get done today is go for a little mining session. I haven't really done very much mining. I don't have very many diamonds and you know the shopping district is open now. It stays closed for the first few days but it's open now. Uh, I would like to be able to go buy some stuff I need instead of having to try to get it all myself but I also do need to get some supplies. Uh, I want to get some deep slate. I want to get some redstone some gold, and some diamonds. I also want to eventually mine a pretty big hole underneath of this monument to put some things in. And I also will need to light up all of the caves in the surrounding area. So I want to get a look at what the underground here looks like. I'm going to just come around here and just start mining and make my way straight down and hopefully not fall. There we go. Whoop. Keep myself from drowning there. Might uh, put this in my offhand instead so I can see. And also be really careful going down here. I'm going to dig a, a too wide tunnel going down. I'm going to grab this coal. I still don't have very much coal either. That's something I should uh, try to grab before I get down to the deep slate levels. I uh, crafted a bunch of torches and I have an ender chest filled with some torches and some other stuff I might need just in case. Let's dig this too wide drop down here and see where I end up. Ooh, that is a pleasant surprise. Oh, I'm down to bedrock. <laughs> There's a whole lot of nothing. Um, I might... Oof, I hear some lava. I might dig towards that. That might mean... A cave system somewhere. Okay. This looks promising. I feel like I haven't really done very much strip mining or like mining for diamonds since uh, the Caves and Cliffs update. I'm going to see if I can do better with exploring caves. I'm going to stick to my base area here. That's kind of a thing here on Titancraft is not mining under anyone else's 
base area we have a resource world for mining so i can mine here and i can mine in the resource world i'm going to see what's around this area it's quite a big area that i have marked out as you've seen so i should be good to mine pretty far okay that's pretty cool i kind of like that hello Let's see, I'm facing north now, so that direction is my starter base. That direction is the rest of my claim. So I'm all good for a little while here. I'm going to just explore this whole cave system. I'm going to have to light this up at some point. I do want to dig out a lot of this, so this is actually pretty helpful. This is a really big cave. A little clearing this lava out will be a giant pain in the butt. Whenever I get around to doing that, my inventory is already filling up with junk. Come on. We're still early season. I still would love some ender pearls, if possible. I want to be able to make more ender chests, so I need some ender pearls. Okay, I'm just going to do some exploring around this giant cave, as well as some lighting up. Oh. I didn't even notice this cobblestone. Oh, shh. okay, I guess that answers that question about what this is. Let's cover this up. It's so dark in here that I didn't even see this until I was literally right next to it. Sweeping edge. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. I'm going to not put that on my current sword because my current sword is probably going to get upgraded to a different one because I'm... Well, I guess I'm... I don't know. I'm at sharpness 2. I want to get to sharpness 5. I'm not sure if I want to keep fire aspect and knockback. We'll see. Uh, I'm still hearing spider hissing. What is the spawn range on these? Are these spawning above me? What the? F what? 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 These are really close to each other. No wonder I was hearing spiders. Look at all these freaking spiders in here. Okay. Uh, well, this might be worth doing something with. Uh, I'll have to come back to this. I'm going to screenshot this. And I'm not sure where in relation I am right now to my base and the monument. But this is really close and it might be really beneficial uh, to have this be a farm. Even if it's just a super simple one. I'm going to keep looking for more diamonds. I'm going to kill some of these glow swids as I see them as well. Because I love glow, glow squid ink. I love glowing signs. And I kind of want to make all the signs in my base glowy. But I don't have nearly enough ink yet. I'm going to mark off this hole that I originally came through. Because I, I could just dig my way straight out. But... I know I at least have a hole right here that I can come back to. Another reason I'm down here looking for diamonds is uh, I would love to play with armor trims a little bit here. And then the next few weeks at some point, once I have my gear completely uh, maxed out with what enchantments I want to have, I want to put some armor trims on it. See how I, see how it looks, and I of course want to be able to copy the different uh, oop, trim templates without losing them. Get away from the diamonds and the gold; both are good, actually. Oop! Something we need for the the hub is a bunch of raw gold blocks, blocks of raw gold. So. I need to really try to collect all of the gold that I can find. It would probably help to have night vision. That's something I might do when I come back down here. Because these caves are just so big that like, I can see what's on the ground and what's around me and I can light that stuff up. But I can't really see anything that's up here unless I like look really hard. I can't actually tell what's in the walls. Uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to find this again unless I mark it off like that's the way back remember oh 
Another spawner. Ah, stop it. Yeah, you you two go ahead and do that. Uh, I should probably stop this. <laughs> uh, I should probably run away. All right. <laughs> well, that was a thing. Oh, I guess I made a circle. Or not? What the frick? Hold on. I could have sworn I just went in a circle. Stop this one. Stop. 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 Now, I didn't mark the coordinates of the other skeleton spawner because I didn't think I was going to use it. Let me go ahead and mark the coordinates of that one. Take a screenshot. I'm going to keep checking this area out. Okay, we're at a dead end. Uh, I'm going to go back to the other skeleton spawner and see how close they are to each other. I doubt they're within range. It's really hard to tell uh, in the cave system like that, though. Wait, what? What? The, the other spawner, the last skeleton spawner is literally right there. Stop it. Now this, I'm pretty sure, isn't in spawning uh, range of the other spawners, but uh, it is pretty cool that it's here. Let me just go ahead and grab a screenshot of the cords, just in case. So here's this one right here. And now I need to find the other one again. So these are the cords for this one. This is the, the first one that I found originally. Let me kind of try to triangulate where this is. In this direction a little bit. And then it's... It's this direction a little bit. So it's that way and then that way. I'm going to see if I can build a little tunnel between the two. I think they're too far apart. I might just go diagonally <laughs> since there's a big hole there. I still need to go this way. There we go. Okay. So even if they are close enough, I'm going to have to dig out a lot of deep slate to connect them. Okay. After digging back a bit, there's that one and there's that one. They are very close and I can activate them both at the same time. Okay, well this changes a lot. Uh, it kind of changes my plans a bit. I was not planning on doing anything with spawners anytime soon, but I now have two spider spawners and two skeleton spawners uh, that I can make two different farms out of if I want to. Uh, I probably won't tackle either until I get a beacon. I do not want to have to dig all of this out without a beacon, so uh, I am going to probably work on getting a beacon next and see what I want to do from there. If I want to dig out all of this, at least all around all of the spawners and building like a, a little room to, to kill them in, I will have to see what I want to do. But uh, once I get a beacon, I think I should definitely come down here and uh, try to get these connected up. All right. I, uh, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for more. Subscribe if you want to see more videos of my builds uh, as they come out. I have a lot of plans this season, and I, I think they're really cool. Uh, so I'd love if you hung around for, for that. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.